would you actually enjoy whiskey and chocolate to make the most of the flavor mileage? Well, the, it's an interesting way of, of doing it, actually. What you do is you take a little sip of the whiskey and you just let the whiskey die down and finish in your mouth. Then you take a little bite of the chocolate and the same thing happens, let that melt in your mouth. Then you take another sip of the whiskey and your mouth is already kind of coated in chocolate and you see how the flavours have changed or have been enhanced or what has happened. So it, it's a wonderfully uh, relaxed process. Really? So it's, it's good for night time as well? Very, very good for night time. You know, sit down a couple of drams, a nice selection of chocolates and it really, really does work. And I had a fascinating, fascinating uh, masterclass today with some wonderful, wonderful chocolates that really opened out whiskies and, and allowed everybody to see characters in the whiskey that they might not have noticed beforehand. So it was a really, really effective class, I think. Uh, when selecting a whiskey to pair with chocolate, what are the most important considerations? Well, it's more kind of uh, what chocolate to pair with the whiskey, to, 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 to be honest. You know, you, you probably were, are going to be starting with the whiskey. So you, you, you'll have a look at the whiskey and say, what are the flavours? So, for example, today we had, we had uh, Glenfiddich, 12 years old, which is quite a light whiskey, quite fragrant, a little touch of vanilla that you don't necessarily always notice, but it's there, but quite a short, dry, fresh finish. That was paired with a very, very intense chocolate with a lot of lemon zest in it, which was really explosive in the mouth. Really kind of, oh, yeah, you kind of woke your, your taste buds up. But then when you took a sip of the Glenfiddich again, much longer finish because of the citrus had helped pull the whiskey down to the back of the throat. The vanilla that's in the whiskey was exposed and it's a beautiful and harmonious mix. Equally, we had uh, Laphroaig, uh, which is quite a dry, smoky whiskey. And we had that with, with a, a white chocolate, a kind of white chocolate ganache. And the vanilla in that white chocolate just softened out all that dryness and just allowed the smoke to play around. That was a very, very successful match. And it was just yeah, it was a you know, wonderful roller coaster of flavours. <laughs> I used to live in Venezuela, and then Venezuela is famous for the, one of the best, best quality chocolate. What, what, the, what, which whiskey is the best matching for the Venezuelan chocolate? Ooh, for Venezuelan chocolate. Uh, I'll tell you what we did today, which was Ecuadorian chocolate, uh, and it's similar in some ways because uh, a kind of floral aspect to it. And Venezuelan chocolate sometimes has it, there's that slight floral aspect to it. And that worked as a pure chocolate with a big, big sherry whisky. The sherry's got quite dry tannins, a lot of dried fruits, kind of, you know, muscular, kind of stands there. A big, dark chocolate, but with that floral aspect, the, the, the cocoa butter killed the tannins, okay. and the floral aspect kind of counter, was a counterpoint to the dried fruits. So it became incredibly complex. Amazing. You speak, uh, you explain like a drama. <laughs> it was. I'm still swooning. <laughs> like, uh, how, could, how would you suggest to women? Well, interesting, uh, because Shanai today was saying that, that she was saying she didn't like peaty whiskies. Uh, they were just a bit too medicinal, too strong, too powerful a flavor, which is fine, you know. There's a whiskey out there for everybody. You don't have to like everything. But when she had it with the chocolate, suddenly it became an acceptable flavor because everything was kind of calmed down. Everything was softened down. So if, if you're a lady who might be starting out on, on, on the great route through whiskey, then having a little nibble of chocolate to go with the whiskey softens the alcohol, makes it kind of less fierce, less scary. And really is, is a wonderful way to start and also to, to educate your, your, your poor men who are just sitting there in the corner with a glass and you're sitting there with a, a lump, you know, a piece of chocolate, you know, what, who's in the better position there? Yeah. That's right. So it could be a very good tool for the romantic situation too. It could be. I'm very, I'm very intrigued to, to know that in Japan, uh, it's the women who buy the men uh, Valentine's Day. Of course, it's, it's, it's complete, the complete opposite uh, in Britain. But, you know, I, I'm going to go home and insist that I, I get bought chocolates for, yeah, <laughs> for, for Valentine's Day. <laughs> So talking about chocolate, like Valentine Day is next week in Japan and um, in the world. So what would you do? Uh, what would you suggest for the whiskey connoisseurs who wants to give a special whiskey and chocolate gift? 
Oh, special whiskey and chocolate gift. I would say, well, I have to go back to that Yamazaki I was talking about. Yamazaki 12 year old, very soft, romantic kind of whiskey. Soft, it's kind of, you imagine, you know, candlelight, romantic moments, milk chocolate ganache, so it's not too fierce in the mouth, just nice and gentle and slow and smooth on the, t on the palate, smooth on the tongue. I think that, that was probably the most romantic uh, combination that we had today. <laughs> so it is a present for you. Oh wow, thank you. Thank you. A Valentine's Day present. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Looks for this in the white. Yeah. Very kind of you. Come here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, thank, you. Nice thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.